and welcome back to Crazy Dave's Kitchen, where today we're making winter minestrone. And let me just tell you, this soup is phenomenal. I made this last weekend. I gave a lucky uh, couple of co-workers, two co-workers, I gave them a big giant container of this winter minestrone, and they loved it. Raving, stark raving reviews. Also, I know I've been away for the whole month of October. I, uh, I burned my hand really badly uh, trying out a cornbread recipe and uh, kind of took the month off, but I've been riding high on that cowboy bean recipe. Holy cow, 170 views in, uh, in a month. So, I mean, it was one of my best well-received recipes in a long time. I, even some of my older bread recipes have never seen that kind of a response uh, to a recipe before or the amount of views. And I also picked up five, five new subscribers from that video alone too. So things are really cruising along. For this recipe for the minestrone, you're gonna see this, it looks kind of mushy over here, but I've got uh, some uncured dried uh, a diced pancetta. So pancetta is like Italian uh, bacon, so to speak. And so I have that along with uh, four cloves of garlic. Then I ran in a food processor earlier. My food processor is old. I got it at the uh, Goodwill store, so it makes a lot of noise. So I wanted to get that done in advance. So that's four ounces of pancetta and then four cloves of garlic. And then in this other mix that I have here, this is actually one small onion, um, a couple of uh, ribs of celery, and then some sage, some fresh sage, and some fresh thyme. And that makes another mixture. It's more of like a, like a paste, something we're gonna be able to cook in the pot. It's gonna build flavor over time. I also have some uh, split peas, one whole pound of split peas. Don't worry, these are gonna dissolve into this broth and disappear. You're not even gonna know they're there, but it's gonna add a rich flavor to the entire uh, minestrone. I have, uh, of course, some uh, whole tomatoes that we're gonna crush by hand and the sauce, we have a can of that. We have two cans of cannelli beans, I believe, cannelli beans, cannelli beans, two cans. I have some savoy cabbage, a uh, half of a head of savoy cabbage. You'll find that in your produce department. I also have one bunch of kale that I chopped up. Uh, when I made it last week, I used the Tuscan kale, which is a little harsher, a little hardier. Uh, this is a little more leafy green. Uh, it, it also adds uh, good flavor to, in, if you don't like kale, you're not gonna really recognize it. Uh, in the minestrone. You're really not going to taste it because of all the other wonderful flavors that are in there. Um, it's going to be more, it's something similar to like the taste of zucchini. It doesn't taste like anything once it's cooked up. Uh, I also have a couple of very large carrots that I chopped up. And of course, I've got, I've got some, uh, uh, some butternut squash. So I didn't buy the whole butternut squash. You can buy a pound or so, but I just buy the pound of the already cut up butternut squash and then just cut the larger chunks into bite-sized pieces and that's the way to go. Uh, in our large stock pot, I have a large stock pot back here. Uh, I already have a quarter cup of olive oil and to that we're going to start our cooking process. I will show you step by step how to build this. In about uh, two hours we're going to have a fantastic tasting soup. So. Come along and let's uh, let's ride together by the stove and get this together. Okay, so I've got the uh, I've got the heat about medium high for this right now, and the oil, uh, the quarter cup of olive oil is now kind of shimmering. So we're gonna go ahead and add our pancetta and, uh, and garlic mixture in there like so. So we're gonna break that up. Actually, yeah, okay. I'm trying a different camera angle because I'm always blocking it with my elbow, which is kind of rude. So we're going to go and cook this while we and render some fat for, for about four minutes or so. All right, so it's been about four minutes or so. So now we're going to go ahead and add our celery, onion, and our sage and thyme mixture. And we're going to let this cook for about seven minutes or so until it gets a little bit dry. Still keeping the heat, 
at medium high. Okay, so here we are. It's been about six minutes or so, and this is starting to stick a little bit to the bottom, which means it's drying out, which is fine. At this point, we're going to add our tomatoes, which I've crushed by hand. Keeping the heat still at a pace of high medium, because we're really going to want this to keep on cooking uh, all the way through. So we're going to go ahead and add the tomatoes. I'm going to add the split peas once I briefly rinse them with some water. And again, these split peas are really going to disintegrate into this, into this minestrone. We're going to combine that together well, and now we're going to add five quarts of water, just regular tap water. I mean, if you wanted to get real fancy and use bottled water, you could, but not necessary. And there we go, our, our five quarts, 20 cups, some nice water. We're gonna add in some bay leaves. Uh, I'm gonna throw in three, the two are kind of small, one's kind of large, so that's good. I'm also gonna throw in a large uh, tablespoon of salt, and I'm gonna add in a teaspoon of uh, red pepper flake uh, for flavor. And that's gonna just Bake in there, uh, baste in there. It's going to help to uh, dissolve these green peas into the broth. And so this is really this is going to simmer high heat for 30 minutes. 30 minutes, we'll be back uncovered, and just let it keep rolling, and we'll be back in 30 minutes. Okay, so it's been about 30 minutes right now, and we're still simmering. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to add our. Uh, our harder vegetables, so we're going to add our carrots, and then we're going to also add our cabbage, the Savoy cabbage, half of a head, chopped up, so it's kind of uh, shredded. And then we're going to let this simmer for another 30 minutes before adding our final round. And again, keeping the, the heat high, high medium, high medium, so we have a little bit of a rolling boil or a rolling simmer, however you want to view it. So I will see you back again in another 30 minutes when we're going to add some of our, uh, our other vegetables. Okay, so here we are 30 minutes later, and you can see our, our soup, our minestrone is... Uh, really simmering nicely. So this is exactly what we want. We want a nice rolling simmer uh, to continue to go. 30 minutes with our uh, carrots and our uh, and our Savoy cabbage. Now we're going to add, now we're going to go for uh, the long, this is the long simmer coming up. I actually happen to uh, get a nice uh, rind of a brand new uh, chunk of Parmesan cheese. I'm going to throw this rind into here, uh, and that's going to simmer and add a lot of flavor. This is also the time when we're going to add the, uh, the squash. So I'm going to add the butternut squash in here, just like so, and uh, also the kale. And these are going to now simmer for 45 minutes. So 45 minutes, we're going to put the kale in here in some batches. And this will be the longest simmer. And then after the 45 minutes, we're still not quite done adding things. I still have those cannelli beans uh, hiding in the background. We're going to just rinse those off after the 45 minutes. And then we're going to throw them in for the last 15 minutes of our simmer time. So here we go. We'll be back in 45 minutes to add the beans and then the final simmer. And then we'll be all set to serve our delicious winter minestrone with all of these beautiful flavors. You can see how the broth is just coming 
right together. Really nice, really flavorful, and all these vegetables will be softened uh, and really, really tasty. Okay, so here we are. Here's uh, here's Freya is now in the kitchen helping us. I'm babysitting my niece's dog, Freya. So she's here patiently waiting to see what I am cooking in this pot. Here we are. It's uh, at the 45 minute mark, and so now we're going to add our cannelli beans to the minestrone. So there we go, there's our cannelli beans. These are gonna go and just simmer for 15 minutes while the beans heat up. And then once that's done, we will be ready to eat delicious winter minestrone. And you can see it's nice and thickening and absolutely delicious. Okay, so here we are with our, our large bowl of our winter minestrone soup. Uh, I have a little bit of Parmesan cheese I'm just going to put on top here. It seasons pretty well with the uh, one tablespoon of the, uh, the red pepper flakes. It brings on just a little tiny, teeny, weensy bit of heat. Uh, not that much. Uh, I happen to like that kind of spice. Uh, and the salt in the cheese will be uh, a little better. You may want You may want to season it accordingly, but it's very delicious. I mean, really, really good. And in just two hours, 40 minutes, we have a wonderful, wonderful soup. Um, this, I also experimented and I made this marvelous uh, winter squash bread uh, to kind of accompany this as well. Uh, this video will be next week next week or so before the holidays something for you to bring along to uh you know uh for the thanksgiving holiday which is coming up so i got this wonderful soup wonderful bread these really go great together they're very delicious both of them the bread takes a it's an overnight yeast bread but we'll cover that at a later day thanks again for tuning into crazy dave's kitchen Feel free to click down and subscribe to my channel. Also click in the description of, uh, of the soup. There's going to be a link to the full recipe uh, at crazydaveskitchen.com. Feel free to click on that. And also you can subscribe to the website and get updates in real time, uh, a printable version of the recipe, or even view the recipe on your phone uh, while you're performing the recipe, similar to the way that I did. And uh, I think you really enjoyed this soup. It's really great. Thanks again for tuning in, and we will see you next time.